Dissolving the Dead, Walking on Water, and Kim Trails and Chill. Plus this day in history with Inovid and our song of the day by Sunny Knight and the Lakers on your Morning Monarchy for June 23rd, 2016. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com, welcoming you to Media, brought to you by you. We've been around since 2005. We are listener-supported, independent, non-commercial alternative media, and we can only do it with your support. MediaMonarchy.com slash support has PayPal, Patreon, Bitcoin, a post office box. As I've said many, many times, if you can give a little, I can give a lot. We do the news in the morning at 9 a.m. Pacific time. We do it live via MediaMonarchy.com slash listen. And then a little later in the afternoon, like at noon, we do an hour-long DJ set. So that's 10 shows a week, keeping you up to date on the latest news and the latest music. You also might know me from the long-running New World Next Week video series as well. The latest episode just published a couple of hours ago. We'll get to that towards the end of this Thursday, June 23rd, 2016 edition of Your Morning Monarchy. You know what Thursdays mean. That means holy hexes. That means cults, crazies, pop culture and there is no shortage of high weirdness going on around the world. We always like to glance at the breaking news. And there is much. Supreme Court upholds affirmative action program at University of Texas. Meanwhile, they remain deadlocked on Obama's immigration plan. The House sit-in guarantees gun control will be a top issue in fall election. Sitting on the Congress floor like a bunch of babies until due process is replaced by secret lists. Freddie Gray case. Cesar Goodson cleared of all charges, so we brace ourselves for more rioting in Baltimore. Meanwhile, the world watches as Britain's vote on EU membership after a tight campaign, and wouldn't you know it, just at that very moment, German, German cinema complex attacker shot dead. So strange reports coming out of Germany this morning that there is an attack in a movie theater. Masked man reportedly fired shots, 50 injured. They arrested him. And then it comes out that he is dead and there are no injuries in the theater. I don't know how you shoot 50 people and injure them, but there are no injuries. That doesn't make any sense to me. It's just the, you know, the fog, the fog of war. So all of this swirls around. Yes, the voting on the EU referendum begins now, which has already, as we've seen, had murder surrounding it. Coldplay are saying the opposite of walls and Brexit. The Guardian is reporting, so let the bland musical stylings of old play guide your political future. Meanwhile, some of the other headlines we're looking at this morning, federal investigators blame fiery oil train derailment along the Washington-Oregon border on the Union Pacific Railroad. And back to the German movie theater situation. But they have gun control. And as Tony Cartolucci Tweeted right back at me. Yeah, strictest in Europe. Guess there's more to violence than access to weapons, but ah, stopping violence was never actually the goal. There you have it. Meanwhile, a bomb threat causes downtown Miami courthouse evacuation. Temporarily closed because of a bomb threat. As we continue to chant, sink, Florida, sink. The last new headline leads us right into our Holy Hexes coverage. <laughs> it's mainstream media news as B-horror flick. This is the headline from USA Today. Quote, Florida officials say they are sure they've euthanized alligator that killed toddler. Bum, bum, bum. One of the other breaking news headlines, up to 5,000 barrels of oil spill in Ventura County. Crews race to stop flow into ocean as California and Florida both race to the bottom. This is your Morning Monarchy. I'm James Evan Plato for MediaMonarchy.com, and it gets strange. I've said a lot of times you can watch the mainstream news in the summer turns to blandness, and it turns to silly news stories. Always important things going on. It doesn't mean the world slows down when it's summer. Just because America might go on vacation doesn't mean the rest of the world is. Definitely thinking about my future where in the American summers I go summer in Australia where it's their winter. It's about my temperature. We've seen a lot of animal stories, and I said it's looking like with all of the animal and child sacrifice stories, it looks like a summer of child and animal sacrifice, which to me in my esoteric brain does not mean goodness coming this fall. So when I saw this story, it really kind of grabbed me. A jaguar 
featured at an Olympic torch ceremony, was shot dead by a soldier shortly after the event in the Brazilian Amazon city of Manaus as the animal escaped from its handlers, an army statement said. The jaguar was killed on Monday at a zoo attached to a military training center where the Olympic torch ceremony was held. The soldier fired a single pistol shot when the escaped animal, despite being tranquilized, approached the soldier. We made a mistake in permitting the Olympic torch, a symbol of peace and unity, to be exhibited alongside a chained wild animal. This image goes against our beliefs and our values, the local organizing committee Rio 2016 said in a statement. We guarantee that there will be no more such incidences at Rio 2016. I'm pretty sure you can't guarantee that. A cartoon smiling yellow jaguar known as Ginga is the mascot of the Brazilian Olympic team. Jaguar is a near-threatened species that's already extinct in Uruguay and El Salvador, according to the International Union for Conservation of Nature. Of course, the shooting caused an uproar among animal rights groups, which pointed to the recent killing of a gorilla at the Cincinnati Zoo, alligators at Walt Disney World in Orlando, as evidence of flawed policy towards wild animals. Many question why the animal was involved in the Olympic event. And, of course, we hear from PETA, and we hear from Animal Justice, and hear from other organizations, but you don't really need to hear from them. All you have to do is look at the picture and see a chained up beautiful animal and see that they're really sending the message that they want to send you. Summer of the Monkeys? People are in a Disney World mood? I don't know. They're trying to maintain the magic down in Florida. So as we'll continue to look around in the world again, we'll always implore you to tweet some of the strangeness going around in your town or city using hashtag holy hexes for Thursday. And if you don't do the tweets, you can always send me an email, james at mediamonarchy.com. Ontario funeral business dissolves the dead and pours them into the sewer. Waterworks officials in a small town southwest of Ottawa are monitoring a funeral company that's become the first in Ontario to use an alkaline solution to dissolve human remains and then drain the leftover coffee-colored effluents into the sewer system. Aqua Green Dispositions began operating in a rental unit within the former Rideau Regional Center in Smiths Falls in, in May 2015 after receiving a license from the Ontario government. Hilton's Unforgettable Tales, a parallel business handling the remains of pets, had been using the same process for a couple of years prior to aqua green dispositions, but it took longer to get a license to handle human remains. The owner, Dale Hilton, who's from a family of funeral home operators in Smith Smalls, said he watched as the green wave swept through the funeral industry, bringing biodegradable caskets and urns. Hilton said he started, take, started the alkaline hydrolysis business in the newly named Gallipo Center as an alternative to the traditional energy-using flame-based cremation process. It brings your body back to the natural state. It's the same way as being buried in the ground, but instead of taking 15, 20 years to disintegrate, it does it in a quicker process, and it's all, say it with me, environmentally friendly. This is actually a rather long and detailed piece from the CBC. As you can imagine, they might be somewhat interested in that story. Hey, and if uh, running them down the drain doesn't work, Popular science is talking about how scientists are bringing people back from the dead. They call it the reanimators. It's not just science fiction anymore. Typically, after just minutes without a heartbeat, brain cells start dying and an irreversible and lethal process is set in motion. But when a person becomes severely cold before his heart quits, his metabolism slows. The body sips so little oxygen that it can remain in a suspended state for up to seven hours without permanent cell damage. Thanks to improvements in technology and medical understanding, the odds are getting better for coming back from the edge. They're so good, in fact, that some doctors and scientists are testing a bold new hypothesis. What if you could induce a near-death state in order to save lives? That's a rather analogous question to every day and the powers that shouldn't be. What if they could induce a near-death state in us uh, in order to save us? If it can be done, it could be a game changer for saving some of the nearly 200,000 Americans who die each year due to trauma injuries. By essentially pressing pause, doctors might be able to buy precious time that can mean the difference between life and death, suspended in animation, no longer the stuff of Star Wars or Avatar. A handful of scientists and medical experts across the country is now looking for ways to suspend life in order to perform surgeries without the threat of trauma patient of a trauma patient bleeding to death or to prevent tissue damage during the treatment of cardiac events. 
Some aim to pump ice-cold saline solution into patients' veins. Others are searching for a suspended animation drug. And enter the Department of Defense. They are, too, heavily involved with the hope that thousands of service and serv servicemen and servicewomen could benefit as well. 90% of war casualties result from bleeding out on the battlefield. In 2010, it launched a $34 million initiative called Biochronicity, an interdisciplinary research project to figure out how to manipulate the human clock. The goal is to examine the way our bodies know that time is progressing, explains Colonel Matthew Martin, a 48-year-old active-duty trauma surgeon whose research is funded through Biochronicity. The battlefield application would be the slowing down or the stopping of time, making a wounded soldier able to survive longer or even survive indefinitely so that we can get somewhere to treat the injury and then reverse that suspended state. Soylent Green meets Serpent in the Rainbow. Now, will that sort of operation be covered under Obamacare? These are some of the great questions you can get from the chat when you listen to this show live via MediaMonarchy.com slash listen, and we super, super appreciate it. And where's the story go? Oh, it sounds all fascinating, and I skipped the first four paragraphs where they tell the heartwarming tale of a regular person, Kelly Dwyer, who died in a snowshoe accident, and they brought her back to life. Then it gets into the part where they tell you, well, it's basically the military, and they want to make super soldiers. But we told you a nice story about a nice lady to make you feel better. And they're really good at doing that. The British Parliament members suspected assassin once brought a gun-building guide, bought a gun-building guide from an American neo-Nazi hate group, an extremist monitoring watchdog said. Thomas Mayer, charged by British authorities for stabbing and shooting Labor Party lawmaker Joe Cox to death one week ago today, is a longtime supporter of the National Alliance, a white supremacist, anti-Semitic political organization, according to the Southern Poverty Law Center. Deeply in bed with Homeland Security. Mayor was charged with murder, grievous bodily harm, possession of a firearm with intent to commit an indictable offense, and possession of an offensive weapon, according to West Yorkshire Police. He was scheduled to appear last Saturday in court, where I believe he had more outbursts, allegedly. We're aware of the speculation within the media in respect to the suspect's link to mental health services, and this is a clear line of inquiry which we are pursuing. We're also aware of the inference within the media of the suspect being linked to right-wing extremism, which is, again, a line of inquiry which will help us establish the motive for the attack on Joe. The mayor spent at least $620 between 99 and 2000 on books and other materials from the National Alliance's publishing house, according to records obtained by the center, which tracks hate groups in the U.S. The 1999 order included a manual on how to build pistols at home. And that is allegedly what he had used. <sighs> I figured it was coming to this. The National Alliance, founded in West Virginia in 1974, is perhaps best known for the racist novels of its founder, William Pierce, The Turner Diaries, a post-apocalyptic book that has been called a grisly blueprint for race war, served as Timothy McVeigh's inspiration for his bombing of the Oklahoma City Federal Building, which blah, blah, blah. On top of his patronage of American hate groups, Mayer subscribed to S.A. Patriot, a South African magazine published by a pro-apartheid group, the White Rhino Club, according to The Telegraph. Mayer, 52, was arrested last Thursday on suspicion of killing Cox. The suspect's brother, Scott Mayer, told reporters his brother had a history of mental illness but wasn't violent. The 41-year-old recently elected lawmaker was leaving her weekly meeting with constituents at a library in Bristol when the killer pounced. Witnesses said the shooter wielded a homemade or antique-looking gun. One person claimed the attacker yelled Britain first. Britain first is the name of a far-right group which disclaimed any connection to the killing. The shouted slogan could be an anti-European Union rally cry. The UK is tensely divided ahead of a vote next week on whether the nation should leave the European group. Cox, a former aid worker, champion the cause of Syrian refugees and campaign for Britain to stay in the EU. Both sides in the referendum halted the campaigning activity after Cox's death. The pro-EU Britain Stronger in Europe group said it would continue the suspension on Saturday, while Vote Leave said it had yet to decide when campaigning would resume. And that was the back and forth, which it doesn't matter now because it's on. And we get into, ev yeah, ev everything is wrestling. The outcomes generally have been decided, and they 
throw you the bits. You know, a lot of that has actually come out even in some of the new... God, was it? I, I'm pulling this off the top of my head. A couple of years ago, there was like the Nickelodeon like Kids' Choice Awards or something. And a lot of the new YouTubers and web stars were a lot of the people now involved in that. I forget who it was. Maybe Tyler Oakes, who's a huge YouTuber. I think he went online once, basically... They knew who had won, but they were still shilling the audience to text and spend money to vote once they had already decided. Tyler Oakes took to Twitter to say, they already told me I won. What are you guys still voting for? They already told me I lost. I forget. That's kind of a bungled story to basically say, it's all wrestling, it's all fixed, the outcome was done. They just want your compliance. A few weeks ago, a 68-year-old woman lay dying in Virginia. She said it beat the alternative. Faced with the prospect of voting for either Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton, Marianne Noland of Richmond chose instead to pass into the eternal love of God. The dead have had an unusual amount to say in this election cycle. They've forgone flowers for votes. They've looked back on their lives and said their only regret is not being able to vote against Hillary Clinton. They've called the presumptive Republican presidential nominee Trumpy Poo, who attracts angry, not smart supporters. One of the quirkier byproducts of a campaign season defined by vitriol and polarization has been a dramatic increase in the number of people whose last words are being used to campaign. Between 2003 and 2004, June, according to data provided by obituaryclearinghouselegacy.com, only five notices mentioned the presidential contest between Skull and Bones members Bush and Kerry. Over those same months leading up to the 2008 clash between Obama and McCain, there were 28. Romney and Obama elicited 22 mentions four years ago. This cycle, however, there have been 119. 9-11 backwards. Is disdain for Trump and Clinton driving the surge, or is some broader social change afoot? Although it's difficult to determine the exact cause, obituary experts have their theories. It's all social media, they say. All the posting and tweeting has acculturated Americans to sharing intimate details, including political predilections, which has now transformed the obituary. We've noticed in obits in recent years that they're becoming more personal, said Katie Falzone, who analyzes Legacy.com's data. People are viewing their lives as less private than they would have two decades ago. The political obituary, experts say, has become a metaphor. The time when it was considered impolite to openly discuss politics or religion is long gone. What a sad, sad state of affairs that the nearly 100-year-old woman who saw America grow, probably raised a family, worked hard, made her last words about some phony political bullshit. And the more you invest in these phony baloney leaders that you hate, oh, I hate them so much, that's why they win. You give them your hate. You give them that energy. How'd all those protests against Bush go in 2004, aside from rigged elections, see previous statement about everything is wrestling. What a sad, sad, really depressing state of affairs. All this shit will be over in a couple of months. And it'll be Hillary. And we'll be back exactly where we've been, killing people and lying and cheating and full of shit. American shit. That's why we've not invested or planted any flag in this fight, you guys. It's much longer and long-term, but the powers that shouldn't be want you to freak out about right now. About right now. Don't plan for the future. They're already planning the government for Mars, and they're making you argue about basketball. This is a huge win for the Empire. They're making you... Their names are on your dying lips. You're listening to The Morning Monarchy for two to rather Thursday, June 23rd, 2016. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com. We start to get a little wistful sometimes on Thursdays as we pull back in some ways and look at just what on earth is going on. And a lot of times the best answer is not taking part. So that was a little phony baloney politics for you, but right back here in Portland, you got four Portland assistant police chiefs under investigation, and even the chief of police, Larry O'Day, has been put on leave because he pulled a Cheney.
The state investigation of Portland Police Chief Larry O'Day continues. Our media.